Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at Casio's PXS 3100. No, it has not just hit the market. I know that these have been out for about a year. However, Casio just came out with brand new models, the 5000, 6000, 7000. So I was really curious to go back and take a nice critical look at the 3100 and just see where it's stacked up next to those three and the rest of the market here in 2022. So that's exactly what we are doing today. We're gonna go through its various functions and sounds, talk about the action, let you hear some of its auto accompaniment features and the like. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on the channel, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe and the notification bell so that you can come back and join us for future videos. Love, love, love seeing this community keep growing the way it is. Without further ado, let's jump right in to today's review of the PXS 3100 right away. So Casio's 3100 has been with us for well, well over a year now. It came out with the 1100. These were, of course, the updates to the original 1000 and 3000 from the PXX series. Um, but now Casio has released three brand new models, the PXX 5000, 6000, 7000. And so this was a great opportunity to go back, take a look at the 3100 and see where now does it fit into the overall lineup? Is this still a great buy? Is still this an interesting instrument? What's it delivering now that we're in 2022 with this expanded PXS range? And I'm happy to report that this instrument is just as fun to play on today as it was the first time I touched it. Um, and I would even say that my perspective of you know, what the purpose and who the likely target for this instrument has, has even matured or, or, or uh, you know, evolved a little bit since my first playing it. What we've got here essentially um, is a very capable arranger keyboard uh, for people who don't need a high level of editing uh, to go along with the rhythms and accompaniment they're playing, uh, but need portability and really want something that, that feels and re resembles more of a weighted keyboard versus a waterfall action or a plastic spring-loaded action. Because let's remember, for the most part, anybody who's used to playing an arranger keyboard out there, whether it's professional uh, or amateur, are likely to have experienced those functions on a keyboard with less than 88 keys and definitely no waiting. So what Casio really has done here with the 3100 is merge uh, you know, a bit of that arranger world with something uh, that also plays like a nice lightweight portable 88 stage piano into one unit still that can be battery operated and delivered something that's both gonna be fun for hobbyists, but potentially incredibly handy for pianists who accompany uh, vocalists, but uh, you know, without another band, uh, solo piano players uh, who are out there uh, you know, doing their thing but wanting to advertise themselves as just a single person to pay instead of uh, trying to find venues that can accommodate the budget for a band. Uh, or of course buskers uh, who want to be able to hook this up to a battery operated amplifier or something like that and really bring the band with them. This is such a great way uh, to do it. So first let's dive into the sound. Um, I will say that for people who are primarily interested in this as a piano, uh, this is really, uh, from a pianistic standpoint, not a lot different than the 1100 um, and not as good as what you now get in the 5000. So primarily the reason to be looking at the 3100 is all of the other functionality and uh, sort of the pro or semi-pro features that are available on here. But just for the sake of consistency with past videos, we will certainly cover the, the piano portion of this as well. Um, as its tone generator and, and other aspects like this. So this is equipped with their Homburg Grand uh, sample. It's kind of the first version of this that they equipped into the PXS. The 1100 also got it. I was able to clarify with Casio that in fact it was that sample set that got loaded into the 1100 and the 3100 albeit a slightly more simplified version of that sample set with more uh, simplified spatial processing as well as reverb engine. So definitely not getting the same piano experience between the 3100, 1100 and say the 5000, 6000, 7000, but some of those core samples are from the same uh, session where they captured that Homburg Grand. So that's what's loaded uh, in here. 
So let's just go up to our piano. So this is what you're getting in terms of your core piano tone. This is Grand Piano Concert. So it's fairly dynamic. Um, there is definitely more detail that you're hearing uh, versus the 3000. Of course, this is also being driven by a pair of those dual 8 watt speakers that had some uh, level of redesign or, or, or different materials being used in there to uh, improve the performance of them over the first generation. So the clarity out of the onboard speakers is pretty good. The tone ports along the front um, surprisingly really give uh, more treble detail out in front of this than you would expect from something that just has the rear facing speakers. Uh, but when you crank this thing up, it still actually produces a pretty good punch, certainly for something that can be battery operated and is still way under 30 pounds. Uh, it's actually got a pretty impressive uh, kind of tonal performance. So that's the grand piano sound that you get on this. For the price point and given that really being a piano isn't necessarily the point of this particular machine, uh, it's surprisingly sensitive and, and actually quite dynamic. I enjoy playing on it. Um, but let's move on to the 700 other sounds that are loaded into the PXS 3100. These are accessed through, a f I would say, a relatively clear and easy to access uh, user interface. Uh, you use this function button to uh, go through uh, the various stages of this menu on, on the right side of the instrument. Um, and when you're on tone, that's where you can get into your various categories. So you can press piano um, and it will uh, jump in between the two piano categories. Uh, the first one is, is uh, more or less your acoustic pianos and then your second one uh, you get into piano or, or like uh, keyboard instruments that are not pianos, namely the harpsichords. So this is where you're going to get uh, string pads, octave, honky tonk, LA piano, dance piano. Ambient piano. Rock piano. Grand Piano Mellow, Grand Piano Bright. So that's really what it's delivering in terms of the piano options. Then you get into your e-piano and they've got these split up again into a couple of categories. You just uh, get to those different categories by continuing to press the, categ the main category button here on the display. Galaxia EP or Galaxia, Galaxia, uh, dynamic, dynamic, lucent, electric piano one, electric piano two. A huge selection of electric pianos there. Well, 24 of them to be exact. Then you get into your claves and then you get into your vibes. Um, 
Kimba, xylophone, Celeste Glock, music box, tubular bell. church bells, and then back again. Uh, great selection of organs on here as well. JS organ, I have to guess that's probably Jimmy Smith. Um, organ, tremolo organ, so some great jazz organs in here. Uh, give you a couple of more samples. So here's some strings. That's a little more usable. various strings, and then pads, and then you get into all of the others, as is your synth bass. Stands a little bouncy, I know. Hopefully it's not showing up uh, too distractingly on frame. Nice sample. So I hope generally as we're going through all these, the impression that you're getting is the same one as I'm getting, which is besides maybe one or two which fall below what I would say is kind of a professional grade sample, the vast majority of these sounds are as good as you're going to find in instruments three and four times this price for some of these different categories. The e-piano sounds, uh, some of the brass sounds, um, some of the uh, mallet sounds, the organ sounds. These are very, very nicely captured. I mean, there's no crazy emulation going on here. This is uh, primarily sample-based uh, playback, uh, but even still, given the price point that the 3100 comes in at, um, and so, you know, U.S. dollars. We're still talking about you know in the mid one thousand dollar range. Uh, the quality of the tones in here is is pretty respectable. It'd be it, honestly, it would be really really hard to beat. And for people who are familiar with the CDPS three hundred and fifty or the three hundred and sixty, which shares some guts with uh, the thirty one hundred, the big big difference really is. Uh, to me, the processor speed, anybody who's worked with the, the 350 or 360 versus the 3100 will know just how fast uh, the OS you know, is, is navigating, how quickly it's switching sounds. There's just a little bit of a lag. It's tell that uh, that 350 or 360 has just got a slightly uh, downgraded processor in it versus the 3100. So all in all, from a sound standpoint, I know I'm not getting as uh, detailed about the specific acoustic piano delivery on this because of course as I said this really is not the point of this instrument. What we've got is something with a huge range of uh, patches many of which I would say the vast majority of which are highly usable in a live professional setting. Uh, we have onboard speakers which despite their relatively small size are still delivering a nice balanced uh, clear tone. Um, is this going to fill a room on its own? Not likely. Are you going to get really, really big, deep, you know, nine foot grand type bass notes that are, you know, that are going to rock your floor? Not, no, not on this. These are functional speakers um, that are as balanced as you could hope for for the weight savings that this, uh, this delivers. We've got 192 notes worth of polyphony, uh, but you know, the takeaway here is really good acoustic uh, piano tone if that's what you are going to be using. 
Um, but you get this thing if you're going to want uh, the full range of, of kind of modern band sounds and orchestral sounds at your fingertips without breaking the bank. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk about the action uh, and just keep on moving with the 3100. We'll see you in a minute. Now the 3100 is equipped with Casio's Smart Scaled uh, Action or Smart Scaled Hammer Action 2. This is the same one that is on uh, the 1100. Uh, and this is a remarkably short action. That presents uh, a slightly different playing experience depending on your background, uh, depending on your expectations. For people who are coming from uh, either like waterfall actions or spring-loaded actions or uh, you know just at keyboards and they're looking for something that feels a little bit more like a piano but can still deliver high portability uh, and a ranger function uh, they're gonna be thrilled because there are not very many options out there in this price point for people who are primarily acoustic piano players the thing to keep in mind is anytime you have a very short action you're going to have a huge differential in the sense of pressure and weight that you need to activate the key depending on how far in or out you are in the key. Uh, for something with a pivot length that's this short, meaning how long the lever is uh, on the key, uh, you really are going to be, uh, like for something over here that may uh, take about 50 grams to activate, by the time you get back here, that's going to be probably over 60 and by the time you get back here it's going to be almost doubling from the 50 uh, close up to probably like 90 or 100 I would I would think uh, so there's that really big gradient it's just basic you know lever geometry at work here uh, same thing with the black keys however for people who uh, are generally going to be playing uh, fairly standard repertoire nothing too gnarly on the classical side a lot of pop um, improvised music, anything like that, and you're going to be kind of in the sweet spot of where most keys are played, which is maybe an inch in uh, from the outside for your white key and relatively close to the edge of the black key. This uh, action is, is well balanced. So uh, a few uh, just quirks to the shorter instrument that your shorter keyboard that you should be aware of, um, but if you fall into like the 80 or 90th percentile of people who are playing this, meaning you're generally always going to be, you know, activating the key sort of in this range, you're not really going to feel anything too weird. Uh, the tops of the key have a nice texture to it. Uh, same with the black. It's a little more exaggerated than what you get on the newest 5, 6, and 7,000, um, but I don't think it's anything that's going to really turn somebody uh, off. You might notice it because it is a little more exaggerated than other digital pianos that you might run into. Now this does just have the dual sensor um, and it doesn't have any escapement. So again, this is just kind of screaming to the fact that this is intended uh, not necessarily for studio use, but for live performance, personal performance, uh, and trying to make intelligent compromises to deliver a highly portable unit um, at a decent price point for uh, musicians and, and other hobby players uh, who really need something that delivers in this price range. So that's the piece on uh, the action. We're going to come back and talk about the third section, really the functionality um, of the accompaniment and rhythm engine, as well as just generally some of the other connectivity issues. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back in just a second. The central feature of this instrument really could be argued is its auto accompaniment and rhythm engine that they've got on here. Uh, it occupies the left side of the display, all of these buttons over here, uh, and I really like the fact that rather than having the switch between rhythm and accompaniment somehow convoluted or buried in the same kinds of controls, they've laid it out very clearly. You're either in rhythm mode, meaning all you're getting is percussive accompaniment, or you're in accompaniment mode, which means you're getting the bass, uh, you're getting drums, and some other supporting harmonic instruments in there. Uh, there are multiple modes on how this is going to follow your left hand. 
uh, which is the first indication to me that this is not intended for people just playing around with this accompaniment engine. This is intended uh, to satisfy people very much used to professional arranger keyboards, but looking for something that's a little stripped down in exchange for the action. Um, if we go into function by holding this down and then go over to accompaniment and we get into chord mode, we've got full range, finger to sis, um, finger on bass, finger two, finger one, Casio chord. Uh, so multiple modes, which is, is not super common. Usually you just get two or three modes. I think this one has six, if I'm not mistaken. I usually use full range because I'm often using both my left and right hand uh, to deliver harmonic information. and I want the engine to really be able to follow me as best as possible. So that's usually the mode that I uh, am using. Uh, so we'll get out of this and give you a sample of the kind of accompaniments uh, that are available to us here. So we can use the, again, function button to select rhythm over here so we can see all of our categories. So we've got pops, jazz and traditional, Latin, world one, world two, and ballad. And just like the patches, they've got these divided into kind of categories which you can get to by uh, continuing to tap the category. So uh, if we go uh, and turn synchro on, which means this is going to start the minute I press a key. So it's very, very easy to work with. Uh, the uh, chord changes are almost instant. There's really no delay that sometimes you do experience with some lower quality or arrangers. Uh, so this is right on top of it. Uh, and I mean, that rhythm was pretty well right off uh, one of Bruno Mars's tracks from like 24 Karat. It's almost a, a perfect rip off of, of his, um, uh, of that track. Um, so you get into Of time, uh, a lot of time on these. Anyway, so you've got an arranger which is easy to use with a lot of convincing rhythms and it's a ton of fun. So whether you're a, a piano player that is providing some background music for a livelier room and this is your option, I think you'll have lots of tools at your disposal that you're really happy with. 
buskers I could see, uh, you know, really enjoying this. I could also see some hobbyist players who wanted to keep the budget as close to thousand bucks as possible. Um, you know, going to be using some piano, but could see themselves just having a ball uh, playing around with this stuff. Um, and I do think that there's a category of players who, for sure, fall into uh, fall into that category. Switching it to rhythm mode literally just turns all of the other instruments off except for the percussion, as I mentioned. So, etc. Uh, now, some other functionality to talk about. This has two assignable knobs uh, that can do things like you can have it on like a tremolo vibrato mode, you can have it on a reverb brilliance mode. So these are all pre-assigned uh, modes where you've got the two knobs of functionality. The one thing that was uh, caught me off guard is that those are not specific to the patches. So you're setting these the uh, these tones. Uh, whatever you do as you go through your different patches, it's not resetting. Uh, so it's kind of a global uh, setting. So uh, just something to keep in mind. You've got a pitch bend wheel. You've got two headphone jacks on the front. You've got two discrete. Um, outs, a quarter inch outs on the back. This does do recording uh, and more uh, meaningfully it actually does audio, USB audio recording which is really handy for somebody who's trying to you know create a quick USB or a, a MP3 accompaniment track, rhythm track. I could see some band directors, choir directors you know using this to whip off a really really quick uh, rehearsal track or something like that. Um, it also comes with Bluetooth audio and Bluetooth MIDI, that is by way of the little uh, dongle that you can plug in via USB. Uh, and also through that, you can use uh, Casio's Music Space app, which gives you full remote control, um, full control of all of the, uh, the DSP settings and reverb settings, uh, and quite a few uh, options to get in there and tweak some of those acoustic piano tones, uh, certainly at least at a basic level, which could be a lot of fun. Um, you can get the matching stand that comes, it's the same uh, stand that comes with the PXS 1100, I believe, uh, and you can use it with a single pedal or as we've got it hooked up down here, the SP34, uh, which gives you uh, the triple pedal. Um, metronome, split, uh, layer, all of your uh, standard functions also come on the 3100. So, in conclusion, this thing is just as relevant to me as when it came out, whatever that was, a year and a half ago, year ago, something like that. Uh, and the fun and usability of this um, stands out even more to me today uh, than it did when it, when it first came out. It's not going to be for everybody because this is not delivering value primarily in the acoustic piano category. The value here, the reason you'd spend more on this versus the 1100 or this instead of the 5000 would be for people who can definitely see themselves getting a ton of use out of the accompaniment engine as well as the multitude of uh, different uh, settings. By the way, I didn't mention it, but should, you obviously do have the ability to set your own registration. So as you go through and find these combinations of rhythm and you know, uh, right hand sound, left hand sound that you really like, you can save that in a registration so you're not constantly having to scroll through all 700 sounds to get to your favorite stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this rundown of the 3100 here on Miriam Pianos. Uh, if it's the first time you've seen us and you enjoyed the video, got something out of it, please hit that subscribe. We'd love to have you back as a regular viewer uh, and maybe even a regular commenter. We try and get to those as many as possible. My name is Stu Harrison and have yourselves a great day.